Hello and welcome to Rainbow Land. Hello and welcome to this review of my NMB RT8255C+. I know, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, does it? NMB had a habit of making long and confusing model names with little logic to them. Worse, many NMB keyboards were rubber domes, so it's risky to try and gamble on random NMB model numbers. As a useful guideline, if you're looking for a mechanical NMB keyboard, try looking for this, the 8255, its close brother, the 8256, or the RT101, and you should be safe. This particular one is a rare example of me actually paying for a keyboard. The vast majority of my boards I get for free or for pocket change from the uni or from recycling centers. But this one I got off eBay for real money. Fortunately, the vendor agreed to sell it to me for a quite friendly price as he wanted to see one of my video reviews on it. And here it is. This one's from March of 1994, so it's kind of medium old. It's fairly slim. I hope you can see that. It's not that thick at the sides, and it's not exceptionally big for a keyboard from around this time. But the case is fairly sturdy, it has a metal mounting plate, and overall it feels quite dense and well built. It also has a 5 pin DIN connector, and naturally being from 1994 it doesn't have Windows keys. One thing I'm sure you'll have noticed immediately is the colourful layout of the keyboard. This is because it was designed to be used in video editing. It comes with a Matrox logo here, which is a company specialising in video equipment, so it's probably geared towards one of their video editing software packages. Video editing is extremely complex and uses a large variety of keyboard shortcuts, and as a result, the whole alphanumerical block has shortcuts assigned to it which are displayed as the primary legends, and the letters take up the secondary legends at the bottom or even the front of the keycaps instead. However, because there are so many shortcuts, it's not easy to find the right key immediately, which is why video editing keyboards always come with color coding to help the operators get to the right shortcuts faster. For the letters themselves, their color coding isn't completely intuitive. For instance, the P has the same color as the square brackets, which might lead you to believe that the alpha block stops at O rather than at P. Similarly, the M and comma are the same color, but the comma and the full stop are not. So that can be a little bit confusing. It's pretty easy to get used to this, however. This one is particularly colourful as the whole alphanumerical block, as well as a few other keys, are coloured, which is somewhat rare even for video editing keyboards. It also has a very rich variety of colours on it, eight colours in total, not counting the standard white and grey keycaps for ten colours in total. So even for a video editing keyboard, this one looks pretty nice. It should be noted that although it was intended for video editing, it is 100% normally functional as a standard typing keyboard. The coloured keycaps aren't sprayed with colour or anything. They're cast out of an intrinsically coloured plastic. They're slightly thinner than the normal keycaps, and possibly made by another company, but they're both made out of PBT, a material which is resistant to discoloration, and they both feature nice, high-quality, dye-sublimed lettering. The switches it uses are made by High Tech and are nicknamed Space Invaders because of the remarkable shape of the slider. High Tech made a wide variety of switches with different slider colors and ones with one or two eyes, small or large eyes, etc. This particular one is black and has two large eyes. But unlike Cherry and Alps, the color isn't very useful in determining what kind of switch it is. The Desk Authority website shows some of the NMB high-tech switches that have been found so far organized by color, but as you can see, it barely means anything. Beige can even mean linear, tactile, or clicky, which isn't exactly useful. As a general guideline, however, the most common ones are white linear ones, grey tactile ones, and black clicky switches. This particular board uses the clicky black variant, I previously did a review with a board with white linear high-tech switches in it. Check out the link in the video description below if you're interested. 
These clicky high-tech space invaders have several design peculiarities. They're very different from other clicky switch designs. First of all is the contact mechanism. It consists of two electrical contacts that are bent towards each other, but kept apart by a crossbar embedded in the slider that you can see through this window in the slider. Other conductive switch designs like Cherry and Alps went for the opposite. Their contacts separated by default and pressed together by the slider. Second is the origin of the tactility. Other switches base their clicky switches around their tactile switch design and simply add a way for the tactility to produce a noise on the way. For instance, with cherry switches, the slider is divided into two parts, a blue plunger up top and a white jacket underneath, and the tactile bump in it simply fires the bottom part downwards, where it impacts the switch housing and creates a noise. With Alps switches instead, the leaf spring on the right grabs hold of the slider and as you press the slider it is pulled forward and at some point it is released where it slams back against the housing creating a clicky noise. These clicky high techs however are based on their linear switch design. Tactile high techs have a little bump in these contact arms which provides the tactility, but these clicky ones use the normal linear arms instead. The tactility is instead generated by a follower arm that follows a groove cut into the front of the slider, which slightly resembles a greater than sign. The system is quite reminiscent of a latching action switch, such as the Alps lock switch, where a follower arm follows a track cut into the front of the slider, like that. The track imparts the tactility and the follower arm then creates the clicky noise, like so. At first I thought it's the sudden change of direction of the follower arm that creates the clicky noise, but it's not. It appears to be a little ramp embedded in the slider, which makes the follower arm rise up and then suddenly drop. That creates the clicky noise. A secondary effect of this is that the switch is two-way clicky. It clicks both on the way down and on the way up. This is very rare and not present on a lot of switch designs at all. The key feel is nice with a fairly subtle tactility to it. And like my linear space invaders, the feel is slightly scratchy because of the high contact area of the slider with the switch housing, but it feels very solid and leads to the trademark high-tech lack of wobble in the switches. Honestly, these are the most stable switches I've ever seen in my life. If you've seen my review on my Hitech 725, you may recall that there are no actual stabilizers on that keyboard, apart from the spacebar, obviously. Instead, the larger keys are stabilized simply by stepping them, so you have to hit them in the middle, rendering stabilizers useless. In this board, they try to avoid, obviously, using stepped keys, and they did actually go for stabilizers. And this is what they look like. I've never seen anything like it. It looks like a bent paper clip stuck under the edge of the switch. You can see that's there. So the stabilizer appears to actually be a part of the switch. Never seen that with any other switch. They are also a total pain in the butt to work with. Just like the switch itself, which is very obnoxious to assemble, disassemble, and that sort of stuff. Stay away from these. The weighting of the switches is quite stiff. I measured this with coins and weights from the lab as I was quite intrigued at just how stiff these were. As it turns out, actuation occurs at 70 grams of force and it clicks at 80 grams of force. This difference is there because there is a sizable gap between the clicky noise and the actuation. This may sound weird, but actually a lot of switch designs have this. It's just that the gap is a bit more noticeable on these than it is on most other designs. The spacebar is a special blue switch with a longer, stiffer spring in it, and it's ridiculously heavy at 140 grams, making it the stiffest switch I've tried so far by a considerable margin. This is stiff enough that you can comfortably rest two thumbs or four fingers on it without it actuating, and it took me a few days to get adjusted to this lumbering spacebar, so a lot of words I typed during that time got glued together, but after some practice and getting a heavier typing hand, this is not a problem anymore.
The clicky noise is somewhat reminiscent of cherry switches, as both use a plastic hammering device rather than a metal one, which gives a characteristic high-pitched noise to both. Unlike clicky cherry switches, however, the noise isn't excessively loud or annoyingly rattly. They're a quite pleasant soft click, and my colleagues were very enthusiastic about this sound compared to the much louder Focus with Alps clones I normally use at work. I'll demonstrate the difference here really quickly. An important part of why the cherry switches sound so annoying compared to these high-tech space invaders is because the slider jacket is bouncing around in the switch housing after you press a key. And I'll quickly demonstrate that to you with this switch tester. You can hear the jackets bounce around in the housing. And this creates a characteristically grainy and obnoxious noise that many people dislike. Back to the NMB again. Overall, I love this keyboard. This model was made with a variety of different switches, but it's not generally too expensive. It's well made, not uncommon, and these clicky ones, as well as the linear variety, I haven't tried the tactile ones yet, are both very nice. Like almost all NMBs, it comes with a big enter and has a tiny backspace key, but that's a small price to pay, really. All in all, it's definitely recommended. This thing does the quiet click thing very well, and this particular video editing model looks really kick-ass to boot, so I'm really happy with it. That's it for this review. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.